Welcome to Darnley Cyber Cafe, your podcast for cybersecurity, IT, technology, and business news. Now, introducing your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. Episode 39, New European Union Rules Threaten Big Data Encryption. What importance does cryptography have in our world today? Unless you've been hiding under a rock these last three years, you will understand the importance of having your own messages protected in this digital age. On March 24th, 2022, the European Union bodies announced they reached a deal that targets big tech in Europe, legislation known as the Digital Markets Act, abbreviated as DMA. This new law has far-reaching implications, such as the requirement of every large tech company having a market capitalization of more than 75 billion euros and user base more than 45 million people in the European Union to create products that are interoperable with smaller platforms. So this means for messaging apps, such as WhatsApp, letting end-to-end encryption services intertwine with these less secure protocols like SMS. This will certainly undermine the gains in the messaging encryption field today. Now, the focus of the DMA is on the large tech companies, uh, termed as they call it gatekeepers, that defied by their size of their audience, revenue, and structural power, they're able to, you know, compete against or combine their services with smaller competitors. So what does this mean? Me personally, I think it's the story of David and the Goliath, of David being the smaller person attacking the bigger entity, which was Goliath. The DMA law is to break open some of the services that are provided to allow smaller businesses to compete. This means allowing users to install third-party apps outside the app stores or requiring messaging apps to send SMS texts across multiple protocols. The consensus among the cryptographers or anyone in ge- that are in security and privacy alike uh, state that it will be difficult, if not impossible, to maintain encryption between apps. Now, for example, uh, WhatsApp which is owned by Meta or Facebook, it uses a signal protocol that would be affected by this law. This means all of WhatsApp's end-to-end encryption is weakened or completely removed. This takes away from the protection from billions of its users. So just simply merging different forms of encryption across different apps and features, it's just not possible. These changes will only apply once those parties or entities make major changes to their system. So how do you make these systems interoperable? Like, it's, it's kind of difficult to say. So stripping away um, the encryption from one app to be able to communicate with a non-encrypted one is just plain mind-boggling. Over the amount of nonsense this means, the DMA also suggested that messages sent between two platforms with incompatible encryption, with with incompatible encryption schemes, are decrypted and re-encrypted when passed between them, thus technically breaking the chain of encryption that creates that sweet spot for cyber criminals, terrorists, countries, you name it to take advantage of. This all makes sense to you, right? Do you really think tech giants of the likes of Facebook, 
Apple, Google, or Amazon, and the myriad of other companies are going to make identical and interchangeable products that could be easily combined. Personally speaking, I think Steve Jobs would be rolling in his grave with this being thrown about, especially with Apple. So just to kind of put this in perspective, um, imagine going to Burger King and asking for a Big Mac with a double-double. What insanity is the TMA suggesting to undermine the fundamental basics of security, privacy, cryptography number 101? Now, according to some, this may be this may be sunshine and rainbows. Uh, a, a, a company called Matrix is a uh, a project geared around the development of an open source secure communication standard. The Matrix co-founder Matthew uh, Hodgson claims that the challenges with uh, a mandated interoperability but argued that this outweighs the tech giant's insistence of closed messaging ecosystems. The claims that big tech creates these um, quote-unquote walled gardens to trap as many users as possible. Now, personally speaking, uh, I'm a bit... I understand the implications that Matthew spoke, the co-founder of, of Matrix, is talking about being able to to open it up to everyone, to to allow everyone access, free access to this, so that you know everything could be communicated properly. There's no difficulties or boundaries, etc. And I get that. I understand that. And my joke about Steve Jobs rolling in his grave uh, is is kind of his vision of what Apple was uh, back in the day, or still is today, of being compatible. And it, to some extent, uh, Apple or or um, OS X is compatible with some Microsoft products. So it's not that far off. But for messaging for the very core of applications, I don't know. Uh, on the uh, Apple Store, Apple is known for its scrutiny of some apps before it goes in, on the uh, App Store. So their level of um, dedication towards their closed system, you know, is respected and appreciated by a lot of the users who use Apple. So what do you think about this? Should all the tech giants join the same, the train, or are we just headed for a cybersecurity derailment that allows our enemies to gladly exploit this <laughs> clear violation from us? Or should we be looking at the Chinese on how they interrupt their apps and their society experience? Stop by next time to hear more about that one. Thank you for stopping by Darnley Cyber Cafe with your host, Darnley Gresson Jr. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Next time you swing by the cafe, bring a friend and share the show with them. That's all for this episode, folks. We will see you next time.